Yo guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be putting on some accessories and doing some modifications to the 250R as we're waiting for our ball hone for the cylinder. So this right here is our brush hone from Wiseco. This is original. This is what I was going to be using to be honing the cylinder, but it turns out that the ball hone is not only safe to use on a two-stroke, it's actually better than using a traditional style hone. And I'll explain that when we do that down the road. But while we're waiting for that ball hone, which should be here tomorrow, let's put on these parts here. All right, so first I'll show you this brush hone. Pretty trick looking piece. Uh, from what I understand though, this is not quite abrasive enough to do what we need with our cylinder, but it's pretty cool, man. It kind of looks like the, uh, what is it? The double helix for DNA or whatever. Definitely a cool looking part. And we are still gonna use this, uh, but I just wanted to show that to you guys. So the stuff that I wanna do today is pretty simple. I've got an IMS shifter, and I also have a Trail Tech digital um, temperature gauge. So you guys know what happened with the 250R and to, I'm gonna be a little bit paranoid running the thing. Um, I would probably be hopping off and checking this old school analog one. And so instead I'm just gonna replace this thing with the digital, it was cheap enough. You can get these things for under 50 bucks. Uh, I actually got the wrong size. Uh, but it should still work. And um, what we're going to do with the shifter is we're going to modify it. So let me hop over to the quad and I'm going to show you why we even need to modify the shifter. Oh yeah, there she is. So here's the shifter that's on there right now. And I really like, it's a pro design power shifter. You can see it on there. And I really like these shifters. That's why I chose it. I just think it's a really clean look. Uh, however, though, these factory 43 Nerf bars, a lot of times when you go with a pro peg or any kind of aftermarket peg or Nerf bar, a lot of times the placement of the pegs is moved. And it's not just poor engineering, it's actually better engineering than the factory. This is supposed to be a more ergonomic location and I believe it is about two inches back from the factory location. So a symptom of that or a side effect rather is that if you look up here and you look at the brake pedal, you see how the brake pedal is right about here and how much further forward the shift cleat is right there, or the shift toe, whatever you want to call it. So I've already modified the brake. It was pretty easy to do. So this is an ESR brake lever. You can pick that up from eddiesandersracing.com. And uh, you can see the extra hole right here. Uh, there's two little bolts in the back of this cleat. Pulled that off, drilled an extra hole, and just moved it back a little bit. And now there's a five inch gap here, which is what I want. That's about what I have on the Banshee. Banshee is really ergonomic. So what I'm gonna do is measure this gap right here and we'll see exactly what we need to take off of the IMS to make it fit perfect. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and take that pro design off right now. All right, so we got the two shifters here and you can actually see the pro design is actually a little bit shorter. This may actually be a minus one. They do make shorter shifters and uh, I could modify this by cutting it and welding it or cutting this off and drilling the cleat in down here. But I really don't wanna chop this up. This is a really nice piece and I actually, actually uh, will, I've already sold it to a subscriber. So that's gonna be on its way to a new home. Now this is the IMS. This is a steel shifter. Uh, these are pretty cheap. I think I picked this up for about 30 bucks. I will have a link in the description below for all these parts. And what I didn't have on the bench before were these two little shifter toes. So you can see them right here. This is actually pretty trick. Uh, you can get these in a number of different colors. They're anodized aluminum, really cheap from eBay. And what I'm planning to do is cut this down and use one of these cleats to basically make a custom shifter. And that should look really clean. Uh, there's one with um, some knurled uh, edges on it which would be kind of cool, but I think this one's gonna look really clean. This is the one I'm gonna use. Both of them came in the kit. So there's the IMS shifter right there, nothing too crazy. It's got the folding head, which is kind of unnecessary for our needs. You know, if it was a dirt bike or we didn't have Nerf bars, it's possible that a branch or something could hit that. And it's just to prevent your shifter from snapping off or from bending your actual shift shaft, shift shaft that would hook up here. Uh, but like I said, we have Nerf bars, so it's really unnecessary to even have that. So like I said, what I'm planning to do is chop this thing down. We'll put it on first and measure where it needs to be cut. And then we'll drill a hole and put this on here. And I mean, I think that should look pretty good. I'm probably going to peel this sticker off. Maybe we'll see if I can get it off really nice. We'll just move it back a little bit because I do like the IMS decal, uh, but it's crooked. So, and we're probably going to be cutting around this area. So I'll see if I can get that off. Now, before we get to work on the shifter, I just want to show you this trail tech temperature sensor, really, really compact, small unit. Uh, I really like that. And of course they make this for different sizes. I accidentally ordered one for 25 millimeter, which is okay. The radiator hoses on the 250R are 19 millimeter, uh, but I do, I already did 
get it on there. It will stretch on really uh, not that big of a deal. So this will work and it'll be a little less restrictive because it's a little bit bigger, but it's pretty simple. Literally is going to go in the line where in place of this analog one. So it's going to replace that and then we'll run this gauge someplace that it's easily able to see. And then it comes with the, uh, the hose clamps as well. Pretty simple kit. And then one last thing is this decal here. I actually had this and I just totally forgot about it. You can get these things on eBay. Uh, it's just going to make it look a little bit more OEM. So we'll put this sticker on today too. Let's see where we're at. Okay, so this is way out there. Now on the uh, foot brake, the, 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 about the center of the foot brake is at five inches. So I want to do the same thing with this shifter. So we have five inches is right here. So right about there is where we're going to drill our hole. Obviously I'll center that up and you can see that is quite a bit shorter than it comes out of the box. And I actually did already replace this sticker. I think it looks a lot better here. All right, this should be really easy to do. I'm going to use really basic tools to get this done. Probably just a drill and a hacksaw. And that's pretty much all we need. Center punch this so the bit doesn't walk. You could really use this same method on any dirt bike or quad if you need to adjust your shifter length. These IMS shifters and steel shifters, uh, you can get it for pretty much any maker model. All right, so there's that. We're gonna be using this flathead. So I'm going to countersink this hole so this will sit nice and flush. And we can bolt that um, cleat on, see how it looks, and we can actually cut this thing off and we'll practically be done. I'm just gonna put a little bit of paint on the edge so that it doesn't rust. Should be good. See what it looks like. So this should look pretty nice. It looks like it's slightly angled, which is no problem. We can take that off and just make a little bit more of an aggressive bend on the shifter. So I will mark where I want to cut this and we'll cut this down. We're just going to use a simple hacksaw here to cut this thing down. All right, so there it is. Looks pretty clean. Once we paint this, you'll never even know. Let's see where we're at now. So there you go. Five inches right in the center. That's perfect. And uh, it does look like it's slightly tilted this way. So I'm gonna throw this in the vise and we'll just bend this a tad to make it perfectly straight. Even though where it is now, it's almost unnoticeable, but I'm gonna bend it just a little bit. Oh yeah. Now I want to throw a little paint on this thing. So you don't want it to rust. Scuff this up a little bit with a scotch brite. Now I'm going to give this a quick shot with this Rust-Oleum metallic paint. It should match this charcoal color pretty well. All right, now while that's drying, we'll put our Trail Tech temperature sensor on. Now you can adjust some things on this. There's only one button. Like I said, this thing is really small. Um, it's really, really, it'll, it'll be very ergonomic, I think, or not ergonomic, um, aesthetic. It'll, it'll be very aesthetically pleasing. It'll look really nice. So you have your temperature on there in Fahrenheit. You can adjust that to Celsius and see, I just pressed the button. It says max and you can adjust when it will, when it will say high and it's supposed to flash. Now I'll be honest. I, I can't figure out how to adjust that. It says to press and hold the button and it should start blinking it goes to that and then i would i can't seem to adjust it so let me know in the comment section below if you know how to adjust that or maybe the temperature has to be at a certain level and then you can set that as high i don't know i was able to adjust the clock it is legitimately 724 it takes forever you basically press and hold it it'll start flashing and you have to go through minute by minute it really takes a long time but i mean really who cares about that? Uh, so yeah, it's uh, pretty easy, straightforward. There's a sticky pad for the back. There's also little plugs to cover up these holes. So I believe I'll be using the sticky pad. I think I'm going to stick it right on our bar pad. I'm not 100% sure yet. First thing I want to do is put this in our hose. 
So we're gonna replace this Boss Racing analog one. We'll pull that out. And like I said, this is actually the wrong size um, insert here. We're supposed to use the 19 millimeter, but I should be able to stretch these tubes on. It should work okay. And I'm put a little bit of dielect dielectric on here because this is gonna be a snug fit. This will make it easy for getting it on and for removing it if we need to do that. All right, that wasn't too bad. I think I'm just gonna leave that gap there for now. Uh, it really doesn't wanna go on there much further and it went to this position fairly easy. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. There is plenty of meat on there that this shouldn't leak. We'll throw our hose clamps on and then we can put this on the quad. Get this thing in position up here. All right, now I'm gonna root this thing Try to make it look as nice as possible. Now y'all might call me crazy, but I'm actually fitting to integrate this right into the bar pad. So I could stick it right on top like this with the sticky pad. I could even put the bolts through and put a little backing plate. But I think what I'm gonna do is actually cut out a section of the foam, sink this in the foam, and then cut a little window so that you can see the temperature. And that should look pretty sleek. If it looks like crap, oh well. All right, now this foam is actually thinner than I thought. It's about, I don't know if you can see the seam there, but that's about as thick as the top foam is. So it's not quite as thick as I'd like. I wanted to sink this whole thing in there. I think I can sink it just semi though, and it'll still look decent. So this could get a little weird, but I'm gonna take a razor blade. First, I'll, I'll, I'll mark out the area, and we'll see if we can cut the foam out. Usually foam is pretty easy to work with. Um, if it gets butchered too bad, I can always get a new bar pad. These things are pretty cheap. should work. All right, so there's our cutout. And I have this little piece of thin aluminum. I already uh, marked my holes here. So this will get screwed into here like so. And then I'll have two screws that come through and they'll come up through the foam and that will hold this in place. So super primitive, it's not like super hardcore, but it really doesn't need to be for what this is. But that should hold it in place nicely. Then we can cut a nice little window in our precision cover and it should look pretty clean. All right, so there it is. It seems pretty chintzy, but honestly, this is all you really need to hold this gauge in place. I just used some self tappers and it's actually pretty solid. That's not gonna go any place. So now I'm gonna take my cover, uh, cut a hole in it, and that will go right over top. We'll probably try to leave the actual digital portion, trail tech, and the button. That area right there should be revealed. Uh, that actually came out pretty good. I think that's really clean. And like I said, it doesn't have to be super solid. I like that. And the cable comes out right here, which is clean also. I will be able to run the cord up right through this loom. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we will put our shifter together and we can't forget our factory decal. I think the factory decal goes around here. I'm gonna have to check online really quick. All right, there it is. I have it lightly zip tied up the radiator hose and then it comes up through here you can see the connector right there and there is our readout it's looking pretty good man i'm happy with that all right so this shifter should be dry now you can see the area 
that we touched up. Now you could re-powder coat this whole thing, but realistically, I don't think that's necessary. And the area that's painted isn't even really a rub mark. Like right here on the side would be probably the most susceptible, but it came out pretty nice. So we have two options here. We've got the knurled toe and then this kind of smooth toe. And I'll show you what they each look like. So there it is with the smooth toe. Looks pretty good. But honestly, I think it looks a little bit better with the knurled toe. I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on this because I plan on keeping this one. See this one, I think goes with the contour of the way that I shaved down the shifter and everything. I just think that looks a little bit more OEM. And as you can see here, guys, it is quite a bit shorter than the shifter that we took off of there. So it is about an inch and three quarters shorter than this pro design. And the pro design, I believe is a minus one because as you saw before, this IMS was actually longer than the pro design. So this is about 2.75 inches shorter than the OEM shifter which makes up for the Nerf bars. It should fit on there nicely. Let's see what it looks like. All right. Feels good to me. And as you can see, we are nice and even on both sides with the brake pedal and the shifter. So that should be pretty ergonomic. I actually just hopped on there and tried it out and it feels pretty good. Now the OEM location for this sticker is actually behind the radiator. However, our rear shock reservoir is in that area. So we can't really put this there or it wouldn't even be noticeable. So I'm going to put it up front here. Oh yeah, it's official now. All right, guys, so I would say that we had a successful day of cheap, easy mods. The shifter came out really nice. And what's cool about that shifter is, like I said, you can do that mod on pretty much any quad or dirt bike. Uh, I don't know if I'd recommend it on dirt bikes because it is kind of nice to have that the hinging uh, portion on your shifter in case you fall over or something, you could snap your shifter. But for quads, uh, that's usually not an issue, especially if you have Nerf bars. But it is cool. You can get pretty much any color shift toe. If you go with the IMS, that charcoal color of the shifter is pretty neutral and it can kind of go with any quad. So you get a different color shift toe to, to match your color scheme and really customize it, make it look cool. It's easy to do with the exception of the uh, bench grinder. And um, even the, a vice is a pretty common thing that most people have. There's really no uh, big tools or crazy tools that are involved in making that custom shifter. Temperature gauge also came out really nice. Again, guys, if you do buy one of those, make sure you get a 19 millimeter. If you're dealing with a TRX 250R, uh, depending on what your machine is, it could have larger or smaller diameters, but I think most power sports are around 19 millimeters. Luckily, this uh, still worked for me, so I will have the correct one in the description below. So our ball hone is coming in the mail tomorrow. We'll be doing our cylinder probably tomorrow, and I'll have that video up hopefully at the end of this week, and we'll have the 250R finally running. I can't wait to rip that thing, and I wanted to give you guys a small update on the Maverick. I know I said that Matt and I were going to be torture testing that thing since we put the fan and the new CVT duct on there. We were ripping it around the house and going around the street and stuff. We went up the hill as fast as we could, and... Uh, you know, it definitely works. The fan uh, cooler definitely works, but unfortunately we heard some weird uh, sounds coming from the transmission and using a stethoscope, uh, Matt and I kind of played around with it. And I, we think there's a bad bearing in the transmission, which is kind of ironic because if you guys follow the series for the Maverick, that was the one piece uh, that the guy had told me was brand new. But if you watch that, I mean, when we bought the Maverick, it was really a heap. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna have to pull the transmission. Uh, I believe you have to pull the motor to do that. It's probably gonna be a hell of a job. But you know what, it's gotta be right because I'm getting ready to sell the Maverick after we do that. And I want it to be nice and solid for the next owner. So I appreciate you guys watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of that shifter mod. If you think I should use the knurled end or the smooth one, let me know what you guys like. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.